Hello, my name is Gerd Melag. I'm the founder of SEOLeverage.com, an SEO agency with a little bit of a different approach with our own developed Erica framework. We are getting great results and great consistent efforts on the side of our clients. In this video, I'm going to revise another website. Today, it's going to be flowkey.com. Just as a disclaimer right at the beginning, I'm not affiliated or related to this website at all. I just happened to dabble in piano playing once in a while, know the brand and check out the website and want to share some thoughts and insights about what I think uh, is good, what could be done better and how this site performs in search using some of my tools. First things first, let's check out the website, get a feeling of how the navigation works, where the content is, etc. This is the homepage we see. This is forward slash en. This is the English version. Apparently, there are multiple languages. We're going to check those out. This is a landing page. People should click the start now and then get to the sign up intro page and essentially the funnel. Uh, we see at the bottom there is a language chooser. So I like to then switch to a different language, see if this is a clean URL. Okay, seem looks good. Let's check out the German one, Deutsch. Okay. Also good, so let's stick with the English one we have. And at the bottom, I have seen something I really want to check out, which is the beginner's guide to piano. There's no menu at the home page. On the home page, this is uh, definitely by design in order to bring people to the start now. We don't want them to get lost. If the home page is your main landing page, that's definitely a good thing to do. If it wasn't your main landing page, I would probably keep a common navigational structure across the website. Uh, let's click on the beginner's guide to piano. This opens up in a new tab here. Uh, we can see the start reading is going to bring us to the yeah, to the chapter one. Let's stick on the main guide page for a moment. We see the table of contents here in two columns. Um, I think that's fine. I would, I'm personally a fan of having some icons, drawings, images or something like this that help navigate. So if it's about piano pedals, there could be an image about it or an icon showing this. Um, others are probably not as easy to illustrate. But ultimately, we want to make sure people can quickly find what they're looking for and then uh, click on it. So for example, piano practice, reading piano notes, timing and dynamics, piano pedals. Okay, I can just jump to a chapter. Quiz is for what is covered, how should I read it? I personally very often recommend having like an intro paragraph before you bring people to the different links just to make sure that you have very relevant uh, content above default and people can now then know what to search for or then scroll down for more. Let's get directly into it. A chapter is presented in this way. We have the column, we have the navigation between the different chapters on the side, which is great. Um, I do like the narrow columns that make it really easy to read the text and uh, the headlines help skimming it. I personally would probably highlight at least one word, important term per paragraph in bold, just to make sure that the text can be skimmed. And if I read less than 76 keys because it's highlighted in bold and I want to know what this is about, I can then read this paragraph. This makes it really easy for user experience. Uh, what I also like on this page is that there is a call to action. I would probably put it a little bit upwards, but yeah, that's fine. And I would have more of those in between somewhere. There's one at the beginning and I've seen before um, another one at the end, but many people are not going to scroll down that far, especially when this looks like this is already the end. Other instrument types, people might not look, um, look at this anymore. So I would spread it out across the page. We've seen very good success in increasing conversions with this. I wanted to quickly check out what this looks like on a mobile phone. So let's check this out. Uh, we let me hide my image here. Okay, so uh, on the mobile phone, uh, this also looks good. I'm missing the navigation here. So on the mobile for the mobile phone, this is not necessarily a good way to navigate. Uh, I would probably provide um, like something like chapters on top or something like this, where I can click and I can. Uh, go to the different chapters. This is a guide and we do not want to lose the user just because they are coming from the mobile phone and there is a chance they're not going to read everything and find this chapter two link to navigate or go to the bottom and just hit the next chapter. They definitely want to navigate all the time. So it would be very easy to replace magazine, for example, by chapters and have a drop down that lets me 
uh, navigate through the different chapters. Now, the second thing I like to do is plug in the website into ahrefs.com, one of my favorite SEO tools. We're not affiliated or anything, but we do recommend Ahrefs and uh, heavily use it in our agency as well. Um, and what I really like is to just, yeah, first of all, check out the main metrics, uh, how many keywords are ranking, what the organic traffic estimation is, traffic value, backlinks, etc. Domain rating is 61, really decent. And then we can also see where the main traffic comes from. So from the United States, Japan, India, Taiwan, Germany, Mexico, United States, and Spain, for example. I just highlighted Spain to test something before. Um, so here we can see directly what's happening with the traffic. Um, overall traffic, I like to check out the overall tendency. So this started somewhere in 2016, at least the data starts there and has had an upwards trend. However, in the last year, it got rather stagnant in terms of overall estimated traffic. However, the paid one rankings did go upwards. So I really like to check out how many keywords do we have on page one ranking, because this very often is a good indicator. Even if there is a sudden drop here in traffic, you can see this on top on the estimated traffic. If the number of page one keywords goes up, very often this is still a good indicator and says the site is in a good position, at least what the tools without access to Google Analytics, etc., can uh, determine here. Last 30 days, pretty stagnant. Last year, we can see June, July updates. There was a little bit of a shift up and down and not really anything has happened since mid of July. So I would expect um, the team here is probably trying to find again what Google wants to see relevant as relevant content, how to format it, user experience may, plays a big role here. And then obviously page by page, the backlink profile. In terms of backlinks, we see domain rating of 61. Uh, that itself is definitely already interesting, but definitely we then might want to check out what kind of backlinks come in. I can select this here by type. We're not going to go into too many details, but we can also filter maybe how many backlinks do they get to the Spanish version, for example, to the English version, which pages, etc. First of all, however, I want to check out the top pages. These are the pages that Ahrefs, this tool, thinks are driving the most traffic to this website. And here we clearly see that this is very reliant on Floki, on the name itself. So in the States, 7,400 people are expected to search for flow key every month. Let's break this down and only focus for a moment on the United States and see what kind of pages bring in how much traffic. So the homepage, 33%. Piano Guide, 7%. This is a really good good one. Learn to play the piano is an amazing keyword to rank for. And I would expect that this keyword definitely also ranks for a lot more interesting keywords with all the content that's there. Um, we see music sheets, read music sheets. You can see the position here. All those are page one rankings, piano lessons, very good page one rankings. How are you up with piano lessons? We already are at the bottom of page one, depending on the search components. This might even sometimes be page two. So we want to definitely check those out. This is 5.4% of the traffic this page seems to be getting right now. The site seems to be getting right now. So maybe there's something that can be improved on this page in order to um, get the rankings up. The content is really pretty much hidden in different in small boxes. I'm uh, not sure if this is really what Google wants to see with piano lessons. Um, you want to then research on Google what kind of content does Google want to see, what kind of format is this. This is really the best format we can come up with, or maybe the sites above us have figured out a better way to respond to a search query around piano lessons. Before jumping into Google and see what kind of pages are indexed here, I want to double check on the language configuration. When there is a multilingual environment like here, you definitely want to make sure that the languages are defined. We can see here they are all defined. This is forward slash DE. This is in the code, the href lang tags defining the different URLs. So Google knows that for English, this is the slash en is the version for German. This is the other version. So this is where this is just really important to double check. And also this is the home page, but let's also double check if this is the case on the guide, for example. So if I want to want the guide in a different language, 
I'm not getting here the specific URL. So this is definitely something I would work on. So Google knows that the Spanish version of the guide is actually actually exists. It's not the home page. Otherwise, Google would think that for Spanish there is no uh, equivalent of this learning guide, which isn't true because if I switch to Spanish here, I'm getting getting a Spanish version. So I think the hreflang tags definitely have some um, improvements that can be made and then also vice versa when I'm on the Spanish page. This should really have a link here to the English version of it, not just to the home page of the English version. Definitely some potential here to make sure Google can better rank and understand this website this way. Here we are back on the article and I forgot to check before what the canonical tag looks like of this article. So when we check out this is chapter one, for example, we see this is the URL, this is the canonical. So this is interesting because it's different. Let's check out what the original this canonical definitely tells Google what we think should be indexed and ranked instead of this one. Let's check out what this page looks like. And then we see that the canonical doesn't exist. So what this means is essentially here on this article, we tell Google to rank this URL, but this one doesn't exist. This usually comes out of our deep dive audits when we run a deep dive audit on a website. Uh, these kinds of things, we spot them very easily. Um, but you def And Google probably even ignores this directive. Google probably has figured out that you define a canonical and is going to still think or define that this is the canonical, this is just a recommendation. But definitely not a best practice to have a canonical that's not, uh, that doesn't exist here. Okay, so just as a side note, this definitely should be fixed. Let's switch this back to English to make this easier. So definitely this works. Let's see if we have this also on this chapter. We have the same thing here. So maybe the URL changed at some point and the canonical didn't change, but definitely something I would absolutely make sure that um, it's fixed. Now let's check out what this page looks like on Google. Uh, on index search results, I've put in site colon uh, just without any language definition, but I'm seeing all kinds of languages coming up. So I'm going to extend this and only go for the English versions. And we can scroll through and find if, check a few things, whether this seems to be going well or not, if there's an, a particular issue we spot and then to run a few queries. So what I really like to do, for example, is finding outdated content. So very often um, by searching for in URL 2019, for example, we sometimes find something where there was a report in 2019, 2020, 2018. In this case, this is not the case, it's great. We also can search for in title really quickly to see if there's anything coming up that shouldn't be coming up. And in this case, this looks really good. We can also check this out for a different language, Spanish, for example, and check if we spot anything. Sometimes we really spot things that should not be there. We could also, for example, search for PDFs being indexed. If that's the case, also not the case. So this is a very good site. Um, solid cleanup, solid organization, a few uh, improvements we can see that can be made in the... Let me just really identify this quickly. And we are back here. Google apparently thinks I'm a bot because nobody's going to click around that madly. Um, when I search for the brand, there is no knowledge panel coming up. So this very often happens for smaller, for brands that are not publicly listed, especially. Um, what you can do in order to um, push this a little bit is to get a Google My Business listing, especially if you usually get mostly positive feedback and have an engaged community. Um, saying this because the community on a Google My Business listing can leave reviews and you don't want to be grilled with a brand that is not making too many users happy. So you only want to do this if you have a good community, you have a great product, people love your product and leave a re are going to be happy to leave a review. You can have a Google My Business listing and that's going to make sure that whoever searches for this is going to see something on the site that's going to be a positive impression. And especially, for example, if you think you're about doing social ads, people are going to search for your brand before they engage or, or sign up or purchase your product. So you want to make sure that there's a really good impression here when they come to this. We see the rating here on the Flowkey 
app on the App Store, which is great. All these things are really positive. And then down below, you can also see what people are searching for. So premium, they search for a free premium version. They compare with Simply Piano. It might be interesting to have an article on flowkey.com comparing it with Simply Piano, if that's possible here. And also uh, specific reviews, trials, downloads, etc., are apparently being searched for in relation to Flowkey. So if we wrap this up, we have seen Flowkey is a very good solid site focused a lot on conversions, especially on the homepage. Um, I think the guide, etc., can do with a little bit more work, especially for mobile phones, in order to make sure that the calls to actions are there. The uh, navigation is always possible so on the user experience side. I think there can be some work done. We see a few issues with canonicals that can be easily fixed. And uh, then I think it's more a question of scaling this. How can we scale content here? We see additional articles also being written, but not with too much structure. So I think uh, the brand might be at the beginning of scaling the content approach, if I interpret this correctly. We see very good rankings. It's a strong brand. People seem to be loving and searching for the brand. So a lot of potential. Um, repeating here, I'm not affiliated or related to this brand at all. Just wanted to share my thoughts about this website and hope this is helpful for some one of you. If you think you would want to uh, consume more of my content, subscribe to the YouTube channel at seoleverage.com. And um, we push out a new video or site review every Thursday, a new podcast every Friday. So if you want to learn more about this or understand how we approach SEO a little bit differently than other agencies, definitely subscribe and follow our content. And my name is Gerd Melak. Thank you for watching.